And so we have reached the Wonderland Express, a platform landing three miles. As you can see, this train was clearly not designed with the best intentions at heart, considering the fact that both le ledges, not roads, ledges, seemed as the train tracks going in the broken up, fragmented. Clearly, Wonderland has possibly needs um, more federal funding or government funding of their train business due to the fact that their tracks are everywhere on floating platforms and stuff which means it's very unlikely the train could actually move from one place to another without flying over the edge and being destroyed now we're entering a tunnel look at that that lovely ghetto large machine gun now I don't know about you but I think, possibly think, I don't know, there's just throwing this right out here that we can't go back that way. It's just a little subtle suggestion, I don't know if the game was trying to hint at it. Now I've got a lovely weird machine gun thing lean the way. Slide for no reason. This area looks a bit more desolate than the one we just left. I wonder what's going to happen. Yeah, it's definitely Nevada desert kind of land, isn't it? Haha, <laughs> aren't they cute? These little tiny creatures, little teacup he helmets and spoon spears. Come on, slaughter another few. Don't know why these little weird madcaps, as they call them. Haha, <laughs> decapitation. Anyone else see his head go flying off? I think I'm going to play a game later. How far can I knock their heads when I chop them off? This is. I mean, you don't really see games like this anymore, do you? Fancy games where you can properly get for a f 15 anywhere. Anyway, where you get so much gore and psychotic kind of talk and slashing off their heads. I mean, you know, these, these things are akin to either dwarfs, I think is the correct term, or do you call them small people? We'll get back to that when I work out the right term for it. But you just casually decapitating their heads. They do look a lot like gnomes. I don't know what these are though. They clearly it's some sort of Oh, is this a teapot party? You know, like that that American people um whatever. But look they're they're living out of teapots and kettles and have cups and spoons. I'm kinda confused as to what they I'm assuming they live off tea then. Then I'm confused as to what kind of giant creature has the time to make all these kettles and stuff for them. Now let's go and explore and see where this leads. I mean, it's a desolate land filled with kettles. Clearly they took all the moisture out of the ground and put it into the teacups. More Venus fly traps. They are quite pretty, aren't they, these purple flowers? I'd like to grow a few in my garden. Again, I'm thinking, yeah, I thought so. Keyhole to some sort of secret treasure. That's not obvious, obviously, unless you go small. Well, I suppose it's when you know what to look for, it becomes more obvious. Huge area there, and nothing in there but a few teapots. Kind of wonder why. I like that, it's on the side that this is the a pathway of faith or something like that. Those invisible islands do remind me of Indiana it Jones. It could have happened that way, Alice. You remember poor Mr. Crook died, didn't he? I think it's Dr. um Indiana Jones the one where he's pursuing the Holy Grail where he goes across to like an invisible platform. And I can't help thinking that was the idea behind those ones back there. Although I don't know why in a small Going small mean, makes it less invisible than it was before. I mean, I can't see just because you're closer to the ground doesn't mean that your eyesight's any better, is it? Um, that's. And there's another thing. Why are there teeth inside teapots, you know? I know it's the equivalent of chess. Well, I ain't seen any chess in this game. I've been smashing up teapots, been smashing up flowers, been smashing up. 
Yeah, I don't think I've been smashing up anything apart from teapots. Isn't that breathtaking? I mean, the, the undertaking to make what looks like a floating clockwork factory. Some of the buildings shaped like kettles and teapots as well. And all red lights and smoky mist and all that. It just seems like a lot of effort. And I wonder who's behind it. That looks like the a gramophone horn of the horn of Helm's Deep. See what it does. Don't know if they heard that. Just thought I'd just blow lightly into the. I mean, how is that any better than just having a buzzer where you can press it to get the cat, the cable car to come down? Old school methods. Then send to this kettle cart, eh? cable cart, kettle cart. Okay. We'll work. We can work on this. We can work on this. Ah. Poured my heart and soul into the making of that kettle cart. And, uh, I do enjoy this cat. He has some of the nicest commentary I've heard. Dr. Bumby says change is constructive, that different is good. Different denotes neither bad nor good, but it certainly means not the same. Find the Hatter, Alice. He knows more about different than you. But does he know more about the difference between bad and good? Making friends, Alice. You're as randomly lethal and entirely confused as you ever were. I've managed without you so far, Cat. Return to whatever hovels home to you. I'll call if I need you. Predictably rare. It's not a question of if, Alice. It's when. Now hold on. And as they say, shut up. So typical. <laughs> I do love it when the cat comes out with those sayings. As they say, shut up. Well, it's not really a saying. It's, I don't know, maybe it is. But I was just thinking back to earlier in the game when we saw the madcap skeleton inside like a golem thing. And I didn't really say much about that, but I did find that quite strange. Is that like, um, I was thinking, is it an icon like a god to them? Is Was there a time when these madcappers were far better at creating? I've made more graceful entrances. I suppose I must be grateful nothing's broken. I mean, is is it quite possible these madcap people did actually make this clockwork city? Because clearly, if they can make a giant golem, they ha must have the capabilities. And then there's a the question of, was that a boss in, like, the um, PS1 Alice game that you killed earlier? And I think Alice just hinted at something else I want to talk about. Lizzie, remember when a burst of steam blew your dress up around your neck? Just outside Harrods it was. Fortunate your undergarments had been laundered. I wanted to say, how is it that, um... Alice, after going through that kettle thing, I don't know what happened to the kettle, because it seemed to vanish the moment it went through the wall. But I think it would be funny if for once in these games, do you know, genuinely, if they broke their leg or injured themselves horribly, and it really impacted on the whole game, I mean, how many times wouldn't you love to see that if on a game they actually went, Oh no! What? I can't keep going! Ah, oh, I've broken my leg! Ah, oh, I can't go through Wonderland if my leg's broken! I mean, like, if we look at GTA, right, they can casually, in GTA, you get, like, shot to death, rocketed and all that, and then you reappear in a ho hospital. It's just not that realistic, is it? But I'd like the idea of, in a game, if they just smash through that wall, and then the next thing we've got is, like, I don't know, her knee, like the bone of it, just sticking right out of the leg, proper gory, and... and Oh, oh, maybe going unconscious from it and then the cat coming to her rescue I don't know because I would think otherwise Alice is pretty much in a very poor situation if the only way she can be saved is by um, a magic cat because in Alice's world I don't think there's any hospitals or doctors so it's going to be quite funny if anyone actually got properly injured in this thing because nothing's going to rescue you I mean, I think the only thing Alice is going for herself is there's no such thing as disease in her world in um, Wonderland. Otherwise, I'm pretty sure any little tame cut she gets, she could probably die of it in a few weeks' time. Not so lucky for the people she's decapitating and killing. I mean, there's no certified cure for decapitation, I'm pretty sure. But it's all a matter of time. Do you know, 
thinking about it, there is an achievement. You see these hover steam things. If you stay on them for seven minutes, which essentially means put yourself on there, leave the game for seven minutes, and just walk away and do something else, read a book maybe, you get an achievement for riding the steamways. And uh, there's also, I thought that's quite an interesting way to travel, isn't it? You know, just you jump on it, wind travels up your dress or whatever, and then you do a Mary Poppins fly through the air. Ah, oh, such a quality game. It kind of reminds me of Marilyn Monroe when they blow the wind up her dress. Except you can fly. Which can only be modern technology jumping to the rescue. I still wonder why it's these keyholes actually exist as gates. I mean, I don't see any other use for a giant keyhole to be there anyway. You can't stick a key through it. Well, I haven't seen a key big enough yet. Although, I think on Alice's pocket dresses, on either pocket, there's the shape of two keys. Don't know if that makes any difference. Uh, the madcaps are like me. They like roast chicken. If that thing's a chicken. Kind of makes me want to go KFC. But then there's like a sicker feeling inside me that goes, you got K you had KFC yesterday. You, you know your body can't survive taking it again. Oh, that's what that madcap was guarding. He weren't guarding the teeth thing. He was guarding his stack of chicken. See if I can just kill a few of these madcappers and then get back to waiting for the next one. On to the next one. Yeah, more dead heads everywhere. Sad you can't make like a chain out of them. I mean, th yeah, they're giant heads, but you know, what can you do?